Good afternoon, Bella Vista and Bella Vista visitors, and welcome to the BVS Cares Academy Stewardship Class. I'm Brother Allen. And I'm Sister Martin. And today we're talking about Lesson 7, our Lesson 7. Lesson 7 is going to be the uh, setting the timer, setting the timer. Sister Martin. Pray. Oh, let me pray. Well, Father in heaven, O oh Lord Jesus Christ, Oh, Father God, we just want to ask you to please forgive us, Father, for all of our sins, oh, Lord. And, Father God, we just want to ask you, Father, to please, God, just bless us, Father, to get what you would have us to get out of this class, oh, Lord, God. We know, God, that, that only what we do for you will last, Father, and only the things that, that, that what we do for you, Father, and for your glory matters, oh, Lord. So, God, we thank you, Lord. We, we can't praise you enough, God, and we, again, we ask you to just bless this class. Paul, that somebody somewhere will get something out of it and you'll be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus Amen. Name. Amen. Sister Martin. Good. Hello once again. Uh, we are, as always, we want to just go back and do a what our focus for today is and also what our learning goals are for this chapter. This is chapter six, as uh, has just been stated, set the timer. So our focus is make a timetable for your financial goals and we know that we've been talking a lot about debt because the title of our book is say yes to no debt but we also have other financial goals that we need to set so you need to make a timetable for all of your financial goals and by the end of this session what we want to do is each learner should be able to know the importance of time in your life and in your financial life we need to feel that God is preparing you to be successful financially. And what we want you to do is plan to make a plan to leave a legacy, financial legacy of knowledge and money for your uh, next generations. Not just the money, they have to have knowledge of how to handle it also. And with that, we're going to go ahead and get into Chapter 6, Brother Allen. And today, uh, again, Chapter 6 is Set the Timer. and. Uh, our Bible scriptures today will be uh, Psalms 90 and 12, and I'll read those. Psalm 90 and 12 say, So teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. And also, uh, our second one will be Proverbs 13 and 22a. Proverbs 13 and 22a says, A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children's children. Again, a good man leave it an inheritance to his children's children. And we know when the Bible refers to man, it's not gender, it's not gender, it's gender neutral. So it's talking about man and woman. And, uh, and when I was reading this, this, when we were studying for this this week, I thought about number of days. And that, that's, a, uh, that's a scripture that, that I've thought about when it, when it comes to wasting time and what have you. Uh, so teach us to number our days. And when it said number our days, one of the, uh, going back to uh, Psalms 90 and 10, and Psalms 90 and 10 states, it says the days of our years are three score years and ten. And if by reason of strength they be four score, three score years and ten is 70 years old. And if by strength you add another 10 years, which will be 80 years old. So it's talking about right there. So number in our days are so the average person's life span is 70 to 80 years old. And then when it says that, uh, and, and, and in studying this, I, I, I really got to thinking about like, hmm, what does this teach us to number our days? And then, on, and then on that, I started looking at like, well, wow, what does God consider? Uh, when, does, when does God really consider us to be a, and start to, be, to, to mature? And in research, I know everybody, all of us have heard what a, a bar mitzvah is. So boys for boys, that age of accountability is what they call it. The accountability for our actions is 13 years old. Mm -hmm. So that's starting at 13 years old. And for girls, it says, tw it says 12 years old. So in our time, what we do, and when it comes down to setting the time of what we do, we start saying, well, we might have a young man that's 23 years old, 26 years old. Oh, he's still a young man. He doesn't know what he's doing. 
We even might get to the point to say, well, he's 30 years old. He's still a young man. He doesn't know what he's doing just yet. But if, Bible, if the Bible states that the accountability, accountability for the, our actions starts at 13, that means by the time we 26, we almost wasted half of our time accountability already. So, what, so, when, so in, in looking at that, when it says teach us to numb our days, we need to really start to teach our children at an early age that it's time for them to get started at an early age to start learning about what they need to do about accountability and what they need to do. And, and, and again, when they say a good man leave it an inheritance to his children, you know, at, at, at this particular point in time right now, we may be saying, you talking about leaving an inheritance for my children's children, I can't even take care of myself right now. So how can I leave, how can I even think about an inheritance for my, will we talk about our grandchildren when I can't even talk about myself? That's when we go back to the scripture that we always have to put in there. Is Philippians 4 and 13 say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. That's when it comes back to this is a financial stewardship class, but this is a Bible study class first. It's all about what we do for God and letting, and letting God lead us in doing the thing that God would have for us to do. So, so all, of these, all of these things that we talk about, it says that I can do this. It's, it only comes from Philippians 4 and 13, say I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. From there, I'm going straight to our book, and it says, and I'm going to read, it's a lengthy. It says, when I was a child, I always wondered how an ocean liner could fit on the street where my family lived. Never mind that, never mind that ships sail on water and we lived on a small street in a small town in northern New Jersey. Nowhere near the shore, nonetheless, y'all listen to this, and say, nonetheless, my father made constant reference to the time when his ship would come in. And we all heard that probably when my ship comes in, when it happens. And it says, later I learned that this figure of speech referred to the future time when our family's financial resources would increase significantly. And until we boarded that ship, my parents insisted that we would live within our limited means and confine, confine our purchases to only those items that we could afford. Mm -hmm. They were both very responsible with finances and, with their, and their perspective did not include incurring debt as part of our family lifestyle. And then it said, when my dad died in 1975, he left. Y'all know what it didn't say? It didn't say Papa was a rolling stone. And when he died, all he left us was alone. And every way he laid his hat, he laid his home. I messed that up, y'all. Papa was a rolling stone. Every way he laid his hat was his home. And when he died, all he left us was alone. That's not what this said. It said, when he died, when my dad died in 1975, he left very little debt behind. Instead, he left a list that described all, all of his business affairs, names, account numbers, contact information, and a strategy for each financial relationship. The primary debt was the mortgage on the house, along with a few small bills, all covered by insurance and paid in full upon his death. My mother was 44 when my father died and most grateful that he did not leave her burdened by the debt with a stack of unpaid bills. One would think, one would think that I inherited a passion for financial responsibility from him. Certainly both my parents modeled a common sense approach to finance that sustained a freedom that I never considered until I was a young adult. Like so many of us, the truth, if the truth be told, is that I learned about financial responsibility the hard way. Just like most of us, most of us have now, we learn about it the hard way. It says, as I shared earlier, not at, now as an adult who had to experience financial slavery before he could be set free, I understand and appreciate that example more than ever. It says, my father's ship never did come in, but we always had plenty to eat, clothes to wear, and a nice roof over our heads. If we were lacking some essential luxuries, 
I was not aware of it. However, I did learn to appreciate the incredible priceless gift my parents gave me. Once I married and started my own family, my father and my mother were financial. Once I, once I married and started my own family, it said my father and my mother were financially free people. They modeled a common sense lifestyle grounded in the truth of my father's old faded leather Bible. Our ships can come in if we make a commitment to debt-free living and teach our children how to manage money and invest in their futures. All that required is a little time and a lot of patience. And again, it says, when do we set the timer? Well, we set the timer now. And y'all, I, I, I guess I, I learned from a, a while back is that I learned about financial responsibility the hard way. And a whole lot of times we learn some of the best lessons the hard way, but they could be the best way to learn them. But it's better, it, it's better to learn from somebody else's mistakes than to have to learn it the hard way. But when, that, when God tells us something to learn it that hard way, we have to. And uh, I, was, I was thinking this week when we were studying this, I remember I started to work for uh, Lockheed Martin back in, the, uh, back in 91. And around about the mid-90s, Lockheed, uh, one of the pilots at Lockheed, they came and said that uh, they were going to quit the pension program. So all pension programs left. So they did away with all the pension programs. And, you know, we was thinking, well, you know, what are we going to do? You know, you, you've done away with all the pension programs. What, what do we do? At that time, I didn't realize that they were replacing pension programs with a uh, 401k program. Now, for the uh, management, management would get the pension and the 401k program. But for the, uh, the employee non management, we only got the 401k program. Not knowing what, I didn't even know what the 401k program was. That was what, 30 years ago. But yet and still, they said, well, now you have to take out so much, you have to invest so much into your own future. And, uh, and y'all, you know, what I was doing, it was, it was to the point to where I, you know, I didn't know what it was, but, but they started saying, well, okay, you have to take out X amount of dollars, buying a, a share of stock, uh, a half a share of stock. Stock was selling back then from, I think I remember from, from 12 to remember from paying from 12 to $27 a share during the hard time. You know, we, I was always thinking, how is it such a hard time? Not realizing that 30 years later, we fast forward to, the days, to today's time, 2020, most of the companies today do not have pension programs. Matter of fact, the ones that do, even the city is talking about doing away with a pension program and going all of, all of 401Ks where you have to invest in, your, in yourself. Not knowing that what you paid $27 for, $14 for 30 years ago, y'all listen to this, 30 years ago, 27, you go three months ago, that stock was selling for $440 a share. Right now it's down and it's still hovering around four hundred dollars a share. But 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 that's the hardships that we don't know. But 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 what do we always realize and say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. We don't know the hardships, but the hardships that, that God bring us through, those are the hardships that will really teach us. And when they say when do we when and, and again back to what I got stuck on is when do this time starts? For me it started thirty years ago and I didn't even know it. For us, the timer starts, it's a set the timer, when does it start? It starts right now. And what do we have to teach our children? We have to teach our children, what do we have to do for ourselves? We have to set the timer right now. So, Simone. Thank you. Okay, so hello again, Bella Vista members and viewers. Here we are, continuing on this journey. So as I pick up where Brother Allen left off, I want to first commend you for staying the course. Our simple prayer that you can use as relates to today's topic is, Dear God, you gave us the gift of time. Help me use time in a meaningful way by assigning deadlines to my goals and working to meet them. Amen. And as we Amen. state over and over again, this is an action class. This is a class where you have to do some work. And uh, really, that's what the Christian journey is about. Uh, it's great to hear this message, to sing the songs, to be able to just say amen, but God requires action from us, and he says it in his word all of the time. If you do this, then I will do that. Mm -hmm. So in order to receive the blessings from God, 
and for him to help us, we have to get moving. There's some things that we need to do. So and just like Brother Allen was saying about his journey with the pension, I just wanted to say that um, I want to share with you why I'm so invested in this course. Uh, just like some of you who are viewing and going along this journey with us, I too have been in an unhealthy financial situation. I had too many credit cards, carried high balances, paid high interest rates. Mm -hmm. When I was exposed to financial education and financial literacy, I realized that many of the people I knew, beside, including me, and people who were in our community did not know the devastating impact of these things either. So therefore, I'm on a mission to share this knowledge with as many people as I can because I know the difference it will make in their lives and the lives of their family. I know the difference it will make in your life and mm -hmm. the life of your family if you implement it. And more important than that, because this is what God requires of us, to be good stewards over the things he has entrusted to us. So moving on, I want to remind us that understanding the relationship between time and money is crucial. Mm -hmm. If we are to break free from financial slavery of debt and experience financial freedom, we have to realize time is money, but money is not time. Right. So you can lose money, as Brother uh, Allen was stating, and you can gain it back. But once we lose time, we can't get it back. It's gone. Time is gone. So once lost, time can never be forgotten again. And we know time waits on no man. It's going to keep moving, mm -hmm. whether we do something or not. So we have to use it while we have it. Don't wait on a crisis to happen before you put your financial plan in motion. So one of the major areas that time is important about as regards to our financial future is retirement. Mm -hmm. If God blesses us to get to the age that, uh, you know, a little before what, what Brother Allen was talking about, you know, most of us think of 65 as the age of retirement, where we're considering retirement or able to retire, where will we be? Will we be, will we be able to? We're considering it, but will we be able to financially? Mm -hmm. See, our financial life is multifaceted, just like our daily living. We have to be concerned about our families, our friends, our jobs, ourselves, and our community just in everyday life. Mm -hmm. And in our financial lives, we have to be concerned about our income, how much money coming in, our expenses, how much is going up, how much debt we have. Uh, do we have money in savings? Do we have an emergency fund? Do we, what different types of insurance and protection do we have for our family? And retirement, to name the major areas. Some statistics that may surprise you are 56% of Americans have less than $25,000 in savings or their retirement fund. 51% of the workforce have no private pension or retirement fund, even from their jobs. And 34% of workers have no personal savings set aside specifically for retirement. And this is all based on information from the Social Security Administration. Mm. But have you ever met a person who is working who doesn't talk about retirement? So everybody planning to retire, but everybody not really planning for retirement. Mm -hmm. The earlier you start saving, the more time you have to take advantage of one of the financial wonders of the world, compound interest. Just say, this is an example I'm going to give you. There are two people, both 18 years of age, I know, we wish we was 18. Maybe, maybe <laughs> not, because, you know, we didn't have too much sense at 18. But if we were 18 years of age and had this information, uh, so saver number one, and we both want to retire. Say, like Brother Allen and I, we both 18 now. We want to retire at age 65. So saver number one starts putting in $100 a month. And, you know, many times we'll be like, oh, I don't have $100. Well, a lot of us spend two, three, four hundred dollars $400 a month going out to eat on coffee and a lot of other things that we, we could be saving. So I'm, well, I'll go ahead and let Brother Allen have it. Brother Allen is putting $100 a month in. He starts at age 18. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so for the next 10 years, he puts $100 a month in. That's $1,200 a year. So he puts a total of $12,000 in his account and then stops. Now me, I wanted to party, I wanted to buy some clothes and do things for those first 10 years. So at age 28, I start uh, putting my $100 a month in the same type of account that he put his in. Um, 
And I put money in from the age of 28 all the way up to age 65. So I paid for 37 years, my $100 a month. I put in $45,600. So who do you think will have the most money at age 65? Well, guess what? Saver number one, Brother Allen, will accumulate at an interest rate of 12%. This mm -hmm. is com the effect of compound interest, $1,562,000. And me, even though I paid for 37 years and I put in $45,000, my money will only have accumulated to $731,000. The earlier you start saving, the more time you have to take advantage of the power of compound interest. Even though I put away almost four times more money than uh, Brother Allen, he ended up with $830,000 more than me, the power of compound interest. So some questions we ask, want you to ask yourself. At what age do I want to retire, if you're not already retired? How many years do I estimate I will live after retirement? The statistics state that the average person who retires will have 20 to 25 years in retirement. Mm. How much income will I need monthly when I retire? And where will that money come from? Because, you know, Social Security is an assistance program. It's not a take care of you program. Some of you may be like me and have already retired. And like me, you are saying, why am I just learning this? Yes, I said that. I, I try to stop myself from saying it because it's just unbelievable what you feel like you would have done if you had known the information earlier. So I know how you feel, but we have to work with where we are. Mm -hmm. If you have already retired, ask yourself, who do I know that can benefit from this information? We have children and grandchildren and neighbors and church members, and that's why we're here doing this class, because we know that we can reach some people who can benefit from this information, and this is what God wants us to do. We have to go out and serve his people. Remember, we are God's hands and feet here on earth. Let's help lift up our community. We don't want the next generation to be uninformed. As uh, Brother Allen was stating, at the age of 12 or 13, our children are at the age of accountability, so we need to be pouring this into them. We need to be holding them accountable. We need to be encouraging them to start savings account and showing them how compound interest works and, and what they can have at certain points in their lives so that they can be pre prepared financially. Mm -hmm. So I want to leave you with these words. Dear Lord, we believe this is the season for us to appreciate the value of time. Please bless our commitments we have to set this we have to this stewardship class so that we use the time you have given us to invest our resources wisely. And we just always ask this in Jesus' name because we know that we cannot do it by ourselves, okay? Mm -hmm. So uh, as I turn it back over to Brother Allen to close out, I would just encourage you to have a safe and productive week. Wear your mask and observe social distancing as much as possible. Thank you, sister. And, and you all, I, 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 something else, I, and I sent this to uh, Sister Martin this week that I, I read, and this is uh, from Monday, June the 29th, 2020, and I read in USA Today. And, uh, it said race matters. It said the gap between black and white home ownership is vast. New report finds. And it says the gap in racial equity that persists in many faces, in many facets of American life impacts home ownership. It said among black families, 44% own their own home as of the first quarter of this year compared to 73.7% of white families, according to the U.S. Census. And that disparity is even greater depending on the city, according to the analysis of census data by the National Real Estate Brokerage, Red Fern. Home ownership is critical to the accumulation of wealth and a factor in the stark difference between the network of white families, which was $171,000 in 2016 
versus black families who had a net worth of $17,150, according to Brookings. It said, while a house itself can be the inheritance passed on to the next generation, a family can tap a property's equity to find a child's college education, start a business, or give a child or grandchild the, the down payment to buy their own home. And y'all know when, when, when I was reading this again, came back to, uh, to Proverbs 13 and 22, which said, a good man leaving an inheritance to his children. A good man leaving an inheritance to his children. And that Psalms 9 and 12 say, so teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, to the wisdom that God gives give to us, to what we're supposed to do and to teach our children. Uh, and last but always, not least, it says that I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. So we don't want to just, again, we don't want to leave on the term saying that things are so bad that I can't do the how am I, why didn't I start then? But just remember that Philippians 4 and 13 say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthen me. And that's the difference, y'all. Through God, through Christ, all things are possible if we just believe. May we pray. Amen. Oh, Father in heaven, again, God, we just say thank you, Lord. God, we just thank you, Father, for this time, Father, that you've given us, Father, to, to, to pass on, Father, only what you've given us, oh, Lord. Yes, Lord. Father, God, the only thing that the only we know, God, the only thing, only what we do for you will last, oh, Lord. So, Father God, regardless if, his, if, you, if your ship comes in or if your ship doesn't come in, oh, Lord, only what we do for you will last, oh, Lord. And, and, and God, that's all we want to do, Father, is just do whatever it would take for you to be glorified, Father, for your people to learn and to worship you more, Father, and for us to become the people, God, that you would have us to be. Father God, again, we thank you, Lord. We love you, and we can't do it without you. And, Father God, all of these blessings we just want to ask in the name of your mighty, father, mighty son, Jesus Christ's name. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Twenty-seven.